I wanted to share with you a new idea that I came up with. I've had this book for a while and I started looking through it and I was just like, how can I do this in my own life, my own creative life? How can I add things that matter to me, but yet let me play with color at the same time? That's what I'm gonna share with you today. The first thing I wanna share is, this is a new palette. These are paints that I've been acquiring all year and I finally put them in a palette. I talked about this palette before. This is an Arts to Embers palette where it houses half pans. So you're able to easily take them in and out and move them all around, which I really, really like. It's a way for me to not have to dig for paints. And so I've got like, these are all American Journeys. Then I've got Holbein's, then I have Isero. I have a little bit of Schminky down here. And then these are a couple Kaput Mortems that I have because I love the color, but I just didn't have them on my palette. So I wanted to put them out there. So this is Arts to Embers. This is the 36 palette, in case you are wondering. I think he goes all the way up to 48 or 72, so they're all different sizes. But I really love the quality. It comes with a mixing tray already attached. I have a rubber band here that that's how I hold my palette, um, my paper on the outside, just so that I know what palette it is. Because right now I have three of these that I've been putting different sets in, and I really, really like them because every brand is a little different in watercolor. I just wanted to be able to play and mix and see how they worked with each other. So that is my reason for doing this whole sketchbook is gonna be done with this palette, just so that I get to become more familiar with the paints that I already own. This is the sketchbook that I'm using and we will get to that after I share the book. The book is Color In and Out of the Garden. If you don't know this lady, her work is fantastic. I discovered her on Instagram several years ago. Her Instagram handle is Gardener Cook. One word, Gardener Cook. And her name is Laureen Edwards Forkner. I will have all of the supplies and the information for Lorraine in the description box below. This book, it is the most glorious book, and this is why. It's paint swatches and things from the garden. I know, can it get any better than that? I mean, look, this is an example of one. And because I bought the book from her, I actually got a hand painted swatch, which was really, really cool. It was such a surprise, I didn't know about that. She signed my book because I ordered it directly from her. So cool. <laughs> and I wanted to just share some photos with you. I mean, look at this photo, you guys. Is that not beautiful? I love the colors. She talks about the colors and how they inspire her and how the garden and how this practice started. It's actually a daily practice for her, which I find fascinating because I love it. I would love to have all these resources on my hands every day. And it goes through, there are different colors. She talks a lot about them. There's little four, four setups. She talks about learning to see. So it says, this book is about plants and color and being mindful. It's about looking out and looking in. Isn't that a great way to look at? Look at those beautiful things. Let me bring this up. The palette colors are just dreamy here. I love all the tangled roots right there. She talks about color wheels. She, in the back, gives a bunch of the supplies that she used so that you could do it yourself. And look at that. <laughs> I think it would just be a great thing to just sit and do one of these every day. And that's kind of how my practice is evolving. I'm just gonna flip through. These are in color order. Let me see if I can get to a color here. Here's one, so she's got like reds and then all the reds. Look at how beautiful that is. This alone is worth the book to me because I love the swatches and this would be fun to kind of create with the palette that I have because again, color mixing for me is very therapeutic, but it also strengthens 
my senses, my color mixing ability, and how I'm seeing things. So think about if you look at a red, is it more of an orange red? Is it more of a red red? Is it more of a blue red? What kind of red is it? And so practicing with all these kind of mixes with your palette is going to help you understand the possibilities that your palette has for you. So in the reds, she just has beautiful photos. All of her photos are gorgeous. And this was all started off of Instagram. These are posts from her Instagram. She talks about that. Look at that rhubarb. Isn't that amazing? Look at those colors. I find that so pretty. It says pretty tasty. <laughs> so then she goes into pinks. Look at that. I love the softness up here of that one. And look how bold she gets with the colors. So I want you to think of the range of pinks when you think of the color pink. I always think of light and girly and more of a hot pink. I don't think of a deeper um, violet pink, but there definitely are. I love that. Brown, you know I love brown. So look at these pictures of the seed pods the nuts, the acorns. This page I can just stare at because you know I love leaves and acorns and nuts and everything from the yard. It's just really lovely. I love the tangledness of the stems here. I think that's just so pretty. So what kind of exercise would you do for yourself if you had to come up with nine colors? What would you be painting every day that you have access to every day? And she has chapters in here to kind of make you think about things. Like what do you see? What values are you seeing? What things are you seeing? Did you notice the texture on the leaves? Did you notice the delicate nature of the petals? Are they waxy? Are they soft? Those kind of things. So not only is it a color journey, for me it was very much a tactile journey as well because as I started collecting things for my book, I really was paying attention to the structure and paying attention to the the touch of it. Was it velvety? Was it crisp? Was it hard? Was it soft? Those kind of things. And I think that's really important when what do you see, but also what do you feel? Those kind of things. Think about your senses. In here, she talks about her daily practice and it says, Making time to look deeply and allow color to focus our attention supply or sometimes not so supply enriches the way we see the world. Isn't that gorgeous? Love that. So then in the back here, she talks definitely about what paint she's using. She talks about color mixing and how to change them from warm to cool colors, which I think is very helpful. And then she talks about the guide. There's a lot of practical information, brushes, water, and so on. Palette and paper, now begin, she says. <laughs> and isn't that gorgeous with the rock? Love that. So I wanted to show you how this has inspired me. This is a five and a half by five and a half inch journal. This is by Timu Arta. It's 140 pound. It is 25% cold press watercolor paper. And I like these journals. This is my fourth one that I've been doing for leaves for the past three years. And I really just, the size is so nice. It's, this is fabric covered. You can see this is my hand. So it's fairly a nice size. Gives you a lot of room. The texture is good on both sides of the paper, which I like. So this is when I started, October 20th, 2023. And I just went out to the yard every day, I kind of go get mail. So while I'm out there, I am looking for leaves of interest or acorns or anything that like strikes my fancy or makes me look twice. If something makes me look again, I am definitely putting it in my pocket and bringing it in the house. <laughs> so here's how my journey began. Just a simple burr oak leaf. And so what I did was I painted this first, the leaf. And then whatever colors I used or color mixes, I tried to add them here. And it's just becoming like, okay, I did a little bit of buff titanium, let's put some buff here. I mix buff titanium and this yellow gray, so let's make a mix here. However you find it 
easier to put your colors down. And then I decided to give it a shadow just to distinguish the leaf from the color palette itself. So do you see that little dark line? And you'll see little dark shadow lines here. And of course I splash because you know I like splashing. So then my next page, right now I'm only doing the right hand side pages. This was an acorn. And the reason that I love this acorn is it is the darkest acorn I've ever seen. <laughs> and it has kind of a, an eggplant kind of purplish color. And I really like it. And it's got like a, see the top up here? It reminds me of a plum or a blueberry. You know how it gets that clouded color? I really, really like that. So this is where I had a little bit of fun with the schminky colors. This is haze pink. And look how it granulates there. That is this color right there. Why it's called Haze Pink, I'll never know. It seems more blue-purple to me, but, but I really like it. And then the, I put a shadow down here as well. And these colors were inspired from this. Again, I painted the acorn first and then added all the little colors around it according to where I had them. A lot of the light colors are in the little acorn cap or the stem. And then a lot of the acorn I did while it was wet and wet and just kept dabbing in colors. I really, really like that one. And the reason right now I'm doing it on one side is there is a perforation in this book. I don't know if you saw that when I brought it up. Do you see the little lines right there? And so I'm thinking like this one, I would love to just pull out and frame it because I think they would look really cool on a wall or in a frame where there's like four or five of these in a frame. I just think it would make quite a statement. And you could change it seasonally too, which would look nice. This is a yellow leaf that I found. I just liked it because it was crumpled and half of it was eaten. And I like the darkness. Now I can tell you on this leaf, I was trying to think of really where my values were before I put the colors down in there. Because I knew if we put, if I put like the yellows over here, the, the yellows that are close to the leaf, I would kind of lose the leaf. And I, so I was being a little more mindful with that. So that's something to consider too. Like if this was real white up here or light, I probably wouldn't have put the light square up there. But for right now, I'm looking for distinction between the color block and the actual item itself. This was a tiny little oak leaf and I liked it because it almost looks like the top part here was bleached by the sun, yet it was really dark in color here. And I just like the way that it, it was different looking and really odd looking because I don't think I've ever seen a leaf like that. So having this extreme color from like this to like the dark green and a little bit of this red in there was really interesting to paint with. And this, um, what is this mint julep from American Journey? I actually mixed that into the darkest green to change it to a brighter green. I know it's like the weirdest thing, but had I not put the color in there like that, I would have never remembered that. So that's something to think about too, is why it's important to put these colors down so that you do remember that. This was a really big red leaf. It was the first reds in our yard that are changing. And I loved all the mottled texture. So what I did with this one, while it was wet, I did put a bunch of salt on here. It was really wet though. So I have a little bit of salt marks. Let's see if you can see them. See all these tiny dots? I've got them here really concentrated. I've got some up here. See all that little fine dotting? But I just love the way the texture came out for this leaf. Usually with the reds, I don't get dark enough, so they seem very pink. So this one I kept adding darks. I mean, you can see this is pure sepia up here. This is sepia plus kaput mortem. This is kaput mortem. I just kept adding darkness. It was so wet that I was dabbing and drawing lines for the vein lines, but I love the way it came out. It just is so mottled and beautiful. This was a very pale set of leaves, and this one I had a little trouble with placing the color where it would show and not kind of get lost. However, what I liked about this one, see how this leaf kind of gets lost into this color? This leaf gets lost into this color. This leaf kind of gets lost. Remember, I talk a lot about hard and soft edges. So when you can't distinguish 
the two where one starts and one ends, that is really considered a soft edge. Where this edge versus the dark square here, that is a hard edge because you actually see the distinctive line where these kind of blend, that kind of blends, this edge right here blends. So playing with hard and soft, it's just giving me another way to to look at things. And I love the way that the colors came out on these bottom leaves here. So you see in my exercise, I'm actually painting the items instead of actually placing the items on there and taking a picture. You could do either, but I prefer to paint because it's giving me a little bit of skill building by helping me, you know, again, build my edges, try to place the color palette pleasingly for my eye, yet let the item stand out. And this is the last one that I did. And this was a folded up leaf that kind of went, let's see, how would I do that? Like, like that. So you're seeing the front edge here and then as it goes in, it gets darker. So this is the front edge and that's the inside of the leaf. So it's cut. And this one, I started with this square and let it kind of bleed into this leaf so that it kind of morphed into it. And then I started, the next one I did was this lighter pink and I let it just kind of drip down into the inside there and a little bit on the outside. And then again, with the dark here, by when I came to do the bottom edge, I did that dark square at the same time because on this piece, I wanted them to merge. So I wanted to create a soft edge on all three sides and then a hard edge here and a hard edge here. Does that make sense? I wanted you to be like, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? I don't really know. <laughs> so I liked having the colors kind of merge with one another. And then I just went ahead with whatever dark color mixes I made. I just made it pleasing. I tried to keep my darks on the bottom and I tried to keep my more reds at the top and then the more yellows and oranges in the middle. So that is my exercise so far. And I wanted to show you this that I made. When I decided what I wanted the square to look like, how big the square, because I know my leaves around here, we have oak leaves, so they're a lot bigger in size than a lot of like littler leaves. So I knew that I wanted to have a uniform look for the palette. So I took a piece of scrap paper, there we go. <laughs> And I measured out four by four first because that is the size that I'm using inside. And do you see this little hard line here and hard line there? So that is a four by four square. And then I placed it on the edge and I figured out how much I needed on the one edge and here. So you see my corner, it goes right to the edge here. So that's what my corner looks like. And I place it right on the edge of the paper here. And then I just take a pencil and do my little squares because I like the uniformity, which is really nice. Again, I'll show you what the, this side so you can understand. So I'm placing this in the corner and then I just take my pencil and go all the way around to create my little boxes. So I thought you might be interested in this little practice because it's fun and it's quick. Each one of these takes me about 15 minutes which is perfect because I can come in, pull out my paints. Well, in fact, they're sitting on the table right here because I know exactly what paints I'm using. I get my leaf out. I'm going to sit there and do my entire book of the grids first so I won't have to use that again. And then I just start painting. And I like something like that where I don't have to think. I come in, put the leaf down, grab my paints, my brushes, and I'm ready to go. So that is this practice. And again, the book is Color In and Out of the Garden. If you need some quick inspiration, head to her Instagram account or purchase this book so that you can just find a color that you love and start swatching. If you were inspired by today's content, please like, subscribe, or comment. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.